This is a Dragon Blazer production. Well, that got dark. Hello, everybody. Do not adjust that dial. You're right. You're not hearing Kazaya right now. For I, Stefan, has taken over these airwaves to give you a special episode of Unsolved Mysteries That Got Dark Edition. Can we talk about this for a second? I just... Wait, wait, wait. It's That Got Dark. Unsolved Mysteries Edition. That's right, I got it. I turned it around. See what I did there? I think he needs help, guys. <laughs> and that very judgmental voice you hear over there is my co-host! Hi. Kazaya. Thanks. That was really extra... I'm always extra. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't like you saying that you like hijacked the airwaves as if I didn't like give you permission to take this episode over. I did not ask for permission. Okay. Because um, this is a hijacking. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Spoiler alert. I wish I didn't hijack this episode. <laughs> I would have gladly done this episode. You're just being a little bitch about it. I'm sorry, but this episode was not very good. The only reason that you don't like this episode is because there's no mystery to solve. It's purely cultural, which is something that we don't typically deal with on this podcast. Typically, we're dealing with like murders and you know things of that sort. Whereas I don't know this- what to tell you, but... I don't think the people that watch Unsolved Mysteries go into Unsolved Mysteries wanting a non-mystery. I enjoyed it. It's in the damn name! I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Um, And it was sad. Exactly. I mean, it was just sad. And the ghost stories? Not scary. At all. They're they're not scary ghosts, but they're just sad. That was a little they're bit... They're sad, lost that, souls looking for for home. I will admit that was a little bit disappointing that there were no scary ghost stories. No! Because it's spooky season now, guys. Like, yes, I'm aware it's not October. But um, my it's spooky season starts in fucking, enough. like, the day after my birthday. My birthday is August 27th, and the day after my birthday, it's spooky season. As a matter of fact, I start spooky season on my birthday, typically. So it's spooky season, and there were no spooky, scary, skeleton ghost stories. My opinion is it's always spooky season, all year round. Go Halloween. But yeah, I was I was not a fan I of this I enjoyed it. I, I really did enjoy it, and I will tell you that I enjoyed it. And maybe it's because I recall this happening... And I don't remember understanding it as much as I did, as much as I do now when I, when it happened. Cause it happened in 2011. And in 2011, which was eight years ago, Jesus fucking Christ. She uh, was like two. No, no, no. It wasn't eight years ago. Now it was like what? Like 12 years ago? It's 10. 10. 2011. 2021. Yeah. Um, but I was in. You do some math. I was in sixth grade when this... No, I was in fifth grade when this took place. And I was going to a school in town called St. Pete's. And um, I remember us taking up, like... Like, we uh, did, like... Our teachers did a whole segment 
on like earthquakes and tsunamis and shit. I was in Mrs. Allred's class because I remember that shit. Um, and the teachers did like a whole segment. Like it was all of the fifth grade teachers, which we had all of two came into the room together and like talked about it and like explained kind of what happened and like went through what an earthquake was and what a tsunami was and showed us like clips and videos from Japan at the time and shit and then they took up like a two week long donation for it and then all the money got sent over to like help with relief efforts so like I I recall that very vividly and I didn't remember I don't remember understanding what the um big deal was or what the issue was because I didn't understand the difference between, like, a tsunami and, um, like, everything else. Like, I didn't understand why a tsunami was such a big deal. As opposed to just having, like, you know, like, I... In my, like, sixth, fifth grade brain, I thought it was, like, high tide, kind of, if that makes any sense. Like, very high tide. And, like, now as an adult, I understand the force and the power behind it. And I understand how it works and why it happens. So, like, now my brain is, like, working differently. So, like, it was a very interesting episode for me because I remember what my thought process was when it happened as opposed to, like, what my thought process is now watching all this shit. Um, First off, uh, can you please explain to me what the difference between a tsunami and a hurricane is? Okay, so uh, apparently Steven doesn't know what a hurricane is nor what a tsunami is because in the middle of watching this I episode I am just trying in to the middle figure of this watching this episode listening. this man asks me what's the difference between a hurricane and a fucking tsunami and I'm like huh and he's like, he like asks me again and I'm like you don't know like shook but um for those of you that don't know a tsunami um so a, a hurricane is like a, a natural disaster same way a tsunami is, but they're very different. A tsunami is like, um, well, a hurricane. I'll explain a hurricane first because it's much easier to explain. A lot quicker. A hurricane is literally a tropical storm. A lot of people describe it as a tornado over water, kind of. Um, but, like, very powerful. Very serious. Very big deal. Um, a tsunami takes place... When the tectonic plates of a, um, like, um, like where there's a fault line, which is like the, where the two tectonic plates meet. And when that, like when those like, it essentially happens when what causes an earthquake happens underwater. So an earthquake is caused when two tectonic plates finally move after they've been stuck in the same position so long that like tension is built up a lot. Um, and that's what causes the earthquake, that's what causes the shaking, is the pressure and tension being released from those tectonic plates being unable to move. When that happens, when that takes place, when that takes place underwater, it nine times out of ten will cause an earthquake on land, and then the water from where the fault line, from right above where the fault line is, will, like, obviously, because of the, like, force and displacement, it'll be, like, pushed upward, and towards land very forcefully, which is what causes the tsunami. If that makes any sense. Like, it, it's, um, it's what happens when, um, a, when, like, the fault line occurs underwater. That's why, like, when the San Andreas Fault eventually moves, we not, probably won't get a tsunami from it in California because that fault line is not underwater. If we do get a tsunami, it's not going to be nearly as bad as the one in Japan because that one, that earthquake happened directly underwater. Like, they can track where it happened. So what you're saying is, is hurricanes come from the heavens? Uh Uh-huh. And tsunamis come from hell. Okay, yeah, sure. We can go with that. That's fine. Yeah, sure. Anyway, so on this episode, we do watch... The fourth episode of Volume 2, Tsunami Spirits of Unsolved Mysteries. And I will be your host. I'm upset. I, I like, really, like, you can ask Steven. I had, like, a big problem, like, letting go of control for this episode because, like, it's been so long since we did a hijacked episode and I've gotten so into, like, the host mindset. Like, I was really, really afraid to hand over my podcast 
to him because it's just been so long since he posted one. She, she's just upset because she don't have good jokes. <laughs> so the thing is, is like we were literally sitting here watching this, and I'm like googling shit. I'm like, what is this? What does this mean? Like, what is this? What? And then like, what is this? How does this correlate to the story? And I was like telling him shit to write down, and I wasn't even supposed to have anything to do with the research portion, and here I am researching like i like it was a problem it was a problem he literally was like you have to stop you're not supposed to know anything about the case and i was like well no um, these unsolved mysteries episodes are a little different than our normal or other episodes we both watch this case i mean there's no getting around yeah but like i like i'm not supposed to know the majority of information and i gave you a lot of information that i probably shouldn't have had. and i appreciate that and i i kind of wish uh you would have just taken over this case because <laughs> I was expecting to take over it because, you know, ghosts, awesome ghost stories. And no, we got sad, depressing ghost stories of people who died in a giant hellscape of water. I mean, if you're going to be a pussy about it, I will gladly take over the podcast from here. Like, you know, you can be a pussy. That's fine. But if you want to be like, you know, a big manly man, feel free to continue. Oh, now you bring my manliness into this? I did, I did. I, I'm not sorry. I either. just, I just prefer to be the one telling the inappropriate jokes. Because let's face it, I'm better at it than you. You right though. You right. If you want to tell inappropriate jokes, I'll, I'll, I'll continue from here. But if you would like to tell the story, I will allow it to happen. I mean, we could try it. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to do it with my notes. I just watched the episode. I'm not probably not going to need your notes. Go ahead. Take over. I'm not hijacking this. Oh, give me. I'm giving it back. I'm taking it. Thank fucking God. <laughs> I was so upset. I was so nervous. I was like, he's going to fuck it up. He's going to ruin it. I was definitely going to fuck this up. <laughs> I was about to. I, I, you know what? And, and, and I did it. I, I, part of me was probably like, this is probably a bad idea. I was about to get me more, some more alcohol and be like, we're just going <laughs> to... And I didn't want to shit on this episode because I didn't want to, you know... I, what happened to the people in Japan was absolutely horrible. Like, this is just a very sad, depressing episode. My fucking specialty. <laughs> You're... <laughs> No, your specialty is to tell me sad stories about children that get murdered. I mean, technically children died in the tsunami, lots of them. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Go on. Thanks, homie. So, um, <laughs> so on March 11th, um, in 2011, there was a 9.0 magnitude earthquake, which if you don't know the scale, the scale only goes up to 10. So these people were like, nine points away from having the most, like, po like they would have had to increase the scale if these people had, like, a, a 10, um, a 10 level magnitude, um, earthquake. But it was a nine, which is incredibly powerful. I don't think we've had anything that rivals that in the U.S. I think we've had, like, the closest we've had is, like, an 8.2. I could be wrong there. But, um... I am not caught up on my earthquake knowledge... I'm, so I am not entirely sure on that one. I think I'm right. I uh, I'll, I'll double check real quick, but I'm I really I checked, think but I'm I right. just gave you my notes. Yeah, I know. Would it be um, easier if I just you know sent you those? Yeah, notes? just screenshot and yeah. send me the and notes. And then I can I can search. And then you can search and do extra research for me as the podcast goes on, since I'm taking it back. Taking it back. Um, <laughs> Bringing it down it's down okay. the hill. Bring it around town. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> Mr. Krabs! <laughs> oh, no. He's just standing there. Just menacingly. <laughs> we need to stop. I, I, I'm I, very tired. It has been sick. Thanks. I'm very tired, you guys, as well. Um, I've been working a lot of hours. I, like, literally, like, last weekend, all last weekend... I went into work on Friday at 11 o'clock, and then I went to my second job at around 6.30. Um, I, I left my first job at 2.30, and then I went to my second job at around 6.30. And then I woke up, and I was at that job until 2.30 in the morning. And then I had to go home, 
go to bed and wake up again to be at work at 11 and do the whole fucking thing over again. So, you know. Ah. I'm very tired. So, if if this podcast is just a mishmash of fucking bullshit, you know why. Did you find what I was asking about? So... I believe the highest magnitude earthquake recorded in the U.S. is an 8.2, but I could be wrong. The highest earthquake ever is in Valdivia uh-huh. in 1960, or the Great Chilean earthquake. What was that? that it was, was like a 9.6, wasn't it? That was the nine, a nine point six. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, when so when this happened, I had no knowledge of earthquakes. But, like I said, I was in fifth grade, and so I researched a lot. So a lot of these numbers are like ingrained in my brain. But we did have a nine point two in Great Alaska. Okay, I don't count Alaska. I mean the fucking Alaska is a U.S. territory. It's a U.S. It is a state. First of all, of sir, the United States of America. Excuse me. There is a difference between a state and a territory, by the way, so okay, you're fucking I'm sorry wrong. I said territory. Um, I said I meant, it's a United States. I meant the continental United States, like California, because I think the biggest one recorded in the continental United States so, was an 8.2 in, so I believe it was be right. San Diego. I believe it was San Diego. Don't just, 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 just check. Just check. Biggest oh earthquake. my god, I hate that you live in Crestline. This train. Stop. It's just out here making noise and shit. I'm like trying to record. Largest earthquake ever. Yeah, the, it's Alaska is what I'm getting. Hang on. I'm pretty sure that I'm right. Um, are you searching continental United States? No, because I don't think people search continental United States. Search? You look up United States. But the next one after that is in Washington slash Oregon slash California, mm-hmm. eight point seven to nine point two. Yeah, okay, so that I, that's where I was at. That's what that's what my brain was thinking. Really? Because you said eight point two. Yeah, that but says nine. Yeah, but eight, you have to remember that, like, 9. so I remember everything about my fifth grade teacher. I remember everything about most of my teachers, and my eighth grade teachers' sevens looked like twos, and I don't know why. And it was really confusing because this bitch would be trying to teach us math. And, you know, when you're in fifth grade, you're learning the start of algebra. And this bitch is writing fucking sevens that look like twos. Like, I remember that vividly. So that's where my confusion came in. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway. Anyway. We're not talking about American. No, we're we're not. It's, It's fine. We're talking about the Japanese earthquake. So, like, just so we all understand each other, um, hang on, I'm pulling up your notes right now. Also, disclaimer, Kazea is about to try to say a lot of Japanese names. Oh, fuck, I shouldn't have taken this shit back! Do you want me to just try to butcher the names personally? And, uh... I apologize to all the... We're very sorry. ...listeners Um, of Japanese descent, uh, for the butchering that we're about to do. Yeah, it's gonna be bad, homie. I'm sorry to any of you Asian listeners out there that are like, it's obviously pronounced like this, and we're like, uh, like, I apologize. I'm sorry in advance. Um, please don't click away. It's gonna be bad. I have my notes too, so just go, go, tell go, 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 go. me, just tell me when you want me to butcher a name. Awesome. That's what you can do. It'd be helpful. Thanks. You're buddy. welcome. I'm here for you. <laughs> He says, as I've taken back the podcast, it's fine. Um, here we go. So, a tsunami, it was an earthquake, um, it was a 9.0 earthquake that took place in 2011. Like I said, it did not take place in the country of Japan, it took place in the water. So, um, let me look this up real quick, because I believe when I researched it initially, um... That's the most bullshit excuse for a fucking Jeopardy theme ever, sir. Okay, so it was... The epicenter was located 80 miles east of the city Sendai. Um... 
and it took place about 18 miles. It was 18.6 miles below the floor of the Western Pacific Ocean. So that's how we know that it happened over the water, besides the fact that there was a tsunami involved. Um, Because what the tsunami does, and I know I was just explaining it, but essentially, so imagine that you're in a bathtub and you have two bricks, right? They're pushed up against each other, and then you move those bricks really harshly up against each other. That water is going to come up like this and create a wave. That's what that's what created the tsunami. Oh, that I got, the, I got the idea. Well, I'll, okay, I'm just explaining. So that is what caused the tsunami to happen. But the tsunami reached a maximum height of, from what I recall, to be like two thir- 213 feet. Let me look. Um, I have stats on how high. Yeah, the went. tsunami was 131 feet high. That was my bad. I flipped the two numbers. Uh, so the tsunami was 131 feet high, and it took place mainly in the city of Ishinomaki, Japan. I thought I was going to butcher these. You're butchering people's names. Oh. Yeah. You're going to butcher the So I watch a lot of anime. Not that that means I know how to pronounce anything, but... (laughs) I am expert on Japanese (laughs) because I watch Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, Bullshit. I don't watch that anime. I don't even know if that's a real anime. It's probably not. Yeah, I used to watch it. Oh, well, I watch shit like... um, Dragon Ball Z. No. (laughs) Sailor Moon. I did watch Sailor Moon. I do remember watching Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. But the things that I watch now are so different. Like, I watch one called, um... I think it's, like, called Citrus. Or, like, Circuit. Or something like that. And it's really cute. Um, I'm not gonna talk about what any of these are. If you know, then you know. They're probably Um, hentai. They're not hentai. She's watching some hentai. No, I'm not. I would never. tentacle... (laughs) <laughs> That's just no. I'm trying really hard not to king shame, but no, no. I watched one called like what my favorite of all time. Like I watch it when I want to cry. It's called Your Lion April. It's fucking soul destroying. If you haven't watched it, you should. Um, Much like this episode. Yeah, really. No fucking kidding. Like I cried three separate times throughout this episode, and I'm like, I was literally over here curled up in a blanket full of like fucking despair, and Steven's like. Are you sleeping? And I was like, no. I'm just sad. Um, so the there's a Chiro Kano city employee named... Uh, go ahead. Uh, no. That was a, a guy, but he didn't really have an interesting story. His name, his name was Chiro Kano, and he was a city employee. But then they talked about a, uh, talked about a resident of... Ishinomoka. Maka. Moka? Maka. It's Maki. Maki? Their eyes are pronounced like E's. That's like Nori. Maki. Nori is... Ishinomaki. There you go. Alright, and her name is Kensho Aizawa. That actually sounded pretty good. I'm gonna... That's gonna anger somebody. It's fine. I'm sorry. I'm gonna piss someone off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, really um... Busy. Yeah, I remember her story. She said that her relatives made nori. Uh, Noki. I thought it was Noki. No, it's nori. It's a it seaweed... Like seaweed. It's, a, it's a seaweed product. It's and essentially... it sounds absolutely fucking terrible. No, it's, it's the nori. The just sounds gross. Here's Why the thing. You eat, you eat sushi, don't you? Yes, you do. I've seen you I, eat it. I have eaten sushi. What do you think that the sushi is fucking wrapped in, sir? It's seaweed. It's nori specifically. The ones I get is rice. <laughs> okay, so nori is like what they wrap rice balls in and what they wrap like sushi in. Fair enough. Or like seaweed snacks are made out of nori a lot of times. Um, I don't think I've all ever... All of which I eat and enjoy, thank you. I don't think I've ever had a seaweed sushi. They have them but at I the also, Asian market, and I also they are am very, delicious. also very picky with my sushi. Like I'm not really into the whole raw fish thing, so oh I get God. the like California rolls. He's eating fake sushi. That's, oh no! Yeah, it's probably the American. <laughs> I mean, it's called a California roll, so yeah, it's the Americanized version of sushi. So you know, oh, Christ. I apologize again to all of our Asian viewers who are having to put up with this bullshit of a man right here 
Anyway, we'll keep going. You know how long it took me to even eat that part? Like, uh, I just started liking fish. You're telling me you don't look at a fucking roll, like a, a, a fucking I like the shrimp sushi ones. roll full of eel the and tempura. like salmon and tuna, and you're not like, yes, fuck me up with that sushi. Like, the, the tempura, that's my response. The tempura shrimp roll is That's not, that's, good. that's cooked. Never mind. Or, or lobster ones. Shut like up. Like the shut crab up, lobster. You're disgusting. I'm done. Um, anyway, she mentions that they really loved the ocean and that everything changed on the day of the tsunami. Like, it's greatly changed how the people of Japan think of the ocean. Kind of like, um, if you guys have ever watched the movie Soul Surfer, which was huge when I was a kid, and I loved it. It's, like, still one of my favorite movies to this day. Um. I have never heard of this movie. It's about, um, the girl Bethany Hamilton, who is a professional surfer, but she, like, lost her arm to a shark attack. She's, like, a real person. And the movie was based on her. But anyway, in this thing, like, she goes on a mission trip because she's, like, Christian, which is nice. Um, but she, like, goes on this mission trip, and, like, they're, like, there after a tsunami. And I think it was in, like, the Philippines or something, and they were all afraid of the water, like, until she, like, encouraged them to go back in and, like, start, like, doing stuff. They were all really afraid. And that is that was kind of the attitude after the tsunami in this area. Was that like everybody was afraid of the water? They didn't want to go anywhere near it. Like yes, like they've had these issues before, but this no, one I was think so I, I incredibly powerful. That, if I would have survived that, I would have been afraid as fuck too. So let's talk about some things. Like they're used to this shit in this area. Um, let's talk about some other earthquakes that they've had. Yeah, they had an earthquake in 1869 or 1896. That was an eight point was a an eight point four. You just got sixty nine on the mind, huh? Shut up. You started it. It's been a minute. I'm in a drought. It's unfortunate. <laughs> um in nineteen thirty three there was a or okay, so in nineteen eighteen ninety six it was an eight point five. In nineteen thirty three it was an eight point four. Um in 1978, there was a 7.4, and then obviously the 9.0 took place in 2011. So they're used to bigger earthquakes in this area. They probably have like a whole evacuation thing put into place. As a matter of fact, they talk about their evacuation thing for when earthquakes happen because earthquakes don't happen in different areas. They always happen in the same spot. The amount of space that they affect depends on their magnitude. But... Um, they always happen in the same place. I tell you what, if there was ever a reason for someone to say, we need to build a wall. It's there. It's, it's, it's there. It's, it's, it's a, there. It's, it's in that place in Japan. <laughs> you, you build a wall around those beaches. So... Which um, would probably crumble down after the literally, earthquake. Literally, like, it would know. probably just cause more fucking fatalities. Like a really strong it would cause It would literally cause more casualties because people would be rough. smashed into these walls. Yeah, yeah. Instead yeah. of people drowning, there would be hot steel crashing into people. <laughs> literally, like, I need you to stop. Okay, maybe I'm um, not, maybe there's a reason that they haven't come up with this idea. <laughs> literally. Um, but, like, earthquakes always happen in the same place. Like, now it could happen anywhere along a fault line. So, like, let's say the San Andreas Fault decides to move tomorrow. It could happen anywhere from the bottom of, from, like, the mid-California where it ends to Nevada where it starts, right? I, I remember it could San happen. Andreas. It was a good game. It was a good movie. Um... <laughs> But um, it could happen anywhere on that fault line. But it's always going to happen on that fault line. Same thing with this particular area in Japan. It's always going to happen on that fault line. So, nine times out of ten, they probably have a tsunami with their earthquakes. Even if they're relatively small. As a matter of fact, they have, like, tsunami warnings out there. We heard, um, we heard a, actually, like, a couple of them. As a matter of fact, I, like, queued one up, and I thought it would be kind of cool to play it. Um, just to kind of hear what these people hear. Now, granted, let's all be aware, the one that I'm playing is a television, um, warning. And the outdoor ones come with, like, um, we know them as... Siren or something? We know them as tornado sirens. (coughs) Here, they actually sounded a lot like tornado sirens to me. I don't know if they sounded like tornado sirens to you, but they sound like tornado sirens, as a matter of fact. Um, but since they don't have a whole lot of tornadoes in that area, they, um, are tsunami sirens instead. So I'm going to pull that up really quick. It's literally right here. 
津波警報が出ました津波警報が出ました今すぐ逃げてください津波警報が出ました今すぐ逃げてください皆さん東日本大震災を思い出してください命を守るため今すぐ逃げ So that is,、um, that's what like, the people of Japan will hear. So, translation Get the fuck out of there! There's a tsunami coming!、Um, what it actually directly translates to,、um, approximately from what it says in the, the video that I queued up, is、um, incoming tsunami, go to higher ground immediately. But, irregardless of having adequate warning and adequate evacuation, Procedure,、um, it, it would not have done any good.、No. Even if they had gotten like 10 minutes more warning, it would not have done any good. Why? Because on the Red Cross's website, and this is what most places like Japan and the Philippines and Chile go off of when making their plans for evacuation of an area in the case of a tsunami.、Um, The Red Cross recommends about 100 feet above sea level or two miles away from the coast. That's it. That's all they recommend. This tsunami pushed inland about six miles. A little over, about six miles. So, irregardless of the,、um, the shit that happened, <clears throat> like it wouldn't have mattered. So, what you're trying to say is the Japanese version of Poseidon was fucking pissed. Yeah,、um, you know, we all know the stories. I'm Greek. I know the stories. Like, we don't even believe in those gods anymore. But every story that I've ever heard about them, you don't want to piss them off. Because them bitches be petty as fuck and they be destroying whole towns over some bullshit. They、right、be turning、after. bitches into spiders over, like, like, there was a woman named Arachne who was really good at weaving,、um, that Athena turned into a spider because she, like, had sex with a man and she, like, was a woman of her temple and she literally turned her into a spider. And I was like, wait a second. Now, I, d- don't quote me on that story. I could be wrong if anybody has, like, a more accurate version. Like, that wasn't one of the ones that I was taught when I was little. When I、um, grew up, I did more research. But yeah, that, that like happened. Athena did that to somebody. So, like, you know, I don't know if they're gods or anything like our gods, but, you know, I will say if they're gods or anything like our gods,、um, don't piss them bitches off. They be mean. Poseidon will destroy your ass after fucking 20 dolphins. They be mean. No, <laughs> no, those... no. Poseidon had a thing for nymphs. That's why he had so many Cyclops children. And I, 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 have, I, I can just imagine. What the equivalent of gods from Japan are like. Because I've seen their freaking anime, or. <laughs> and there's some terrifying creatures on those damn Now, things. Now, wait a minute. Let's, their let's, imaginations let's not, are pretty crazy. Let's not piss off viewers that we have that are of Jap- Japanese descent. We're not saying that that's an accurate no, 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 depiction no, 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 of your no, no, culture. No, 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 We're just no, being no. bitches here. I'm saying. Okay. So, let's be honest. The Greek gods, all these gods. They're created by, you know, they're, the, these stories are created by man. You should probably b- tread lightly, homie, because you're breaking down your own fucking argument for your God. I'm just throwing that out there. But tread lightly. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, somebody came up with these stories. Somebody came up with your God stories. My God stories? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, like, you know, if, if, if you break it down, The theology of the God of the Bible and the theology of Greek gods are not that much different. Like, in, in, in theory. We have one God, they have 258. I'm just saying, in theory. I may be a little off on the that number. That number's but, very off, sir. But they, they have a shitload of gods. We have one God. I'm just, I'm just saying that, that the theory is what you're saying. That's why I said tread very lightly, and I'm not trying to offend anybody. But you can't say about one culture's gods、okay. that they were created by man when your God could, when the literal same argument could be made for your、oh, God. Okay, so in, in fairness, in fairness, do the Greeks still believe in the. Gods. Some of them do. Really? Yeah. 
I thought that was pretty much a debunked religion. No, um, a lot of Greeks I take figured up. They did. Uh, they transformed into a more no. modern. Okay, so what we have in um, modern Greek land is um, is something called a Greek Orthodox Church. That's the most um, common religion among Greek amongst Greek people. But there are those few. Um, a lot of times they're like older people that were around in like the twenties and shit. You know, the hundred year old motherfuckers and their families that still believe in those gods and still do certain traditions for those gods because it's so ingrained in their culture. And it takes three generations for something to die out. Okay, okay, okay. Anyways, my point getting all I wasn't trying to be uh, the, offensive the, here. The I was only just, point that I was trying to make is that you can't, and like, this is just something, this is just me. Because we all know that I'm agnostic, which means I don't, and it's not that I don't believe in God, I don't believe in religion. I believe in God, not religion. But you can't shit on somebody else's religion with multiple I'm gods. Not try, I wasn't no, 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 that's not what I, I'm not saying that you were. I'm just saying you can't be like, those stories were man made, but my God is real. You can't do that because well, you're, one, you're I wasn't arguing. Bringing up- my God. Well, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, because everybody, I'm sure everybody could deduce that you are a Christian, and that's fine. But, like, your religion could be brought down by the same arguments. That's the only point I was trying to make, is to not go there, because you'd have to go there with your own religion for it to be fair. I'm just saying that the imagination of, of uh, Japanese people, I've seen their animes, and there are some terrifying creatures that have been created in Japanese culture. Okay. All right. I was just trying to like save you from. I wasn't. I don't want. I us, wasn't trying. We're to, not even popular. I don't want us to get canceled. So I like, I'm tr- throwing everything. Like I'm throwing everything out there. Like, and that's just me as a person. Like you guys, if you if you listen for long enough, will learn that about me. Is I'm not going to let somebody shit talk a group. I wasn't trying to shit no, talk. No, no, that's, I'm not, I'm not just, saying that you were, but I, I'm just like, I'm I not going to let you. Greek, you know what I'm saying? I find Greek mythology very, very interesting. I find a lot of these time, this, uh, these things very, very interesting. I find a lot of animes with these creepy creatures interesting. I'm just saying that they have created some very creepy creatures. I'm just saying, you know. I'm just throwing it out there. Your All religion right. also refuses to acknowledge that Jesus was married because it doesn't say it in the Bible, but we literally get like a grand total of four years of Jesus' life. And he was literally married. And not only was he married, he was married to a prostitute. That's going to piss people off, but... Uh, and you're trying to avoid pissing people off. I'm, I'm just making the point. Like, the point I'm trying to make is that, like, you can't be like it was man made when literally like there's so many flaws in your religion that it, people could be like it's man made too I was, and I'm not I'm not being rude like I'm not throwing that I'm not trying to be a bitch if, if you're a Christian I totally think that you should be allowed to do whatever the fuck you want and I totally think that that should be an okay thing and like I don't I'm not against people that are like that I just like the point that I was trying to make is that you can't like pick all these holes in another religion without picking holes in your okay own. you know what let's say it like this okay I, I see the things. Nah, I don't even know. I'm over it. That's all. That's all I wanted to say <laughs> was that the things they believe in, or things they create, the things they think of, they're they're pretty terrifying at times. So I imagine their uh, their gods their are equivalent are their gods are probably just they be as spooky. They be the spooky scaries, crazy and scary as as Greek gods. And I like I said, I find the Greek gods very interesting, but. To say they're not insane and crazy is just, I mean... No, I'm not disagreeing with you. St- the stories they tell with those Greek gods are, I mean, Hercules was a lie. <laughs> Hercules was Disney's a lie. Hercules, um, I love it was a Hercules, lie. Um, but they, they really went away, <laughs> far away from the original story There's literally a line, there is a full-on line when they talk about the birth of Athena, where, like, so back in the day... When people were profound, not like the fucking bullshit people that we have now. I'm not insulting anybody. I'm just, you know, I live in America. There's a lot of stupid people here. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, well, damn straight there. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of stupid people. But like, you know, back in the day when people were profound and and in Greece, they're like them saying that Zeus gave birth to Athena from his forehead. 
very clearly meant to them that Zeus uh, is omnipotent and thought Athena into existence. Whereas a lot of Americans that have heard this story are like, did he have a vagina on his forehead? Is that what they're saying? No. No. He's omnipotent. He thought something and it happened. That's what they're saying. So, like, the stories behind it, like, any mythology are very crazy. But, and I have heard this from multiple people, um, including people of North uh, Native American descent, um, including people from my own family of um, ancient Greek descent, um, all of those stories come from somewhere and something. We did not create them the way that people think we did. They're like they were mainly used as, an ex- as something to explain something that we couldn't explain away. Correct. If that makes any sense. So I'm sure there are gods in Japanese culture that like are of the ocean and that are very scary, and when they get pissed off, a tsunami comes. That type of deal because they didn't know how to explain tsunamis back then, and that's something that they bring up in this episode as well. I kind so, of want to get back on track because I think we were talking about the tsunami warnings. So can we can we at least say that their interpretations? are sometimes very terrifying. Yeah, they can be. Um, so at the Sudai Temple, um, there was a man named Tai... Tai, I'm uh, going to assume his name is Tai. Let, here. Kaneda. Let me, let or Shao. Maybe it's Shao. I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, Tayo Kaneta. Kanada? Kaneda. 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 Maybe your pronunciation was better. Reverend Tell us who pronounces them better, please. Leave a comment. Also, um, I'm just going to pause for a second. Um, thank you guys to whoever the fuck it was that I don't know how it happened. But on our Chris Watts episode on YouTube, we have over a thousand views right now. Yeah, it's and around it, like it, 1,200 it, right now. And it literally happened within like a week. So whoever is responsible for that, we want to thank you guys very, very fucking much. And we really appreciate it. And we're going to start uploading way more frequently on our YouTube channel. Um, because holy fucking shit. Um, so I wanted to like just make a point to like thank everybody for that. Um, we'll shout out our YouTube channel again at the end. Yeah, we have 1,263 views right now of Chris Watts. Yeah, so... And um, like almost 30 comments. People have been... Well, some of them have not always been positive. <laughs> like, and like that's but the other thing too. Some of them were, is, like, you know, really good, interesting if you guys, comments. If you guys go check out that video, it's called um, Dragon Blazer Production Presents Worst Father of the Year. The worst or something like that. Um... It's a really cool episode. I remember that one very vividly. But there's, like, these comments on there. They're literally, like, hating on us. And we just come back to these people, like, generally respectfully. And they're like, oh, we were trying to offend you. (laughs) Sir. Sure. But, yeah, I just wanted to, like, bring attention to that and say thank you because... Yeah, one guy um, told me to... Told Kazaya to ditch the dude. Yeah, I I, I was like, I'm sorry, sir. It will no longer be a comedy podcast because I'm not very funny. (laughs) (laughs) Um... But yeah, I just wanted to draw attention to that and thank you guys for that. Um, I also want to apologize if this episode is extremely scattered. Did you pray to Zeus? <sighs> no. No. Just shut up. It's three o'clock in the morning, guys. I'm trying to get through this so I can go to bed because I have to get like at least a few hours of sleep before I go to work tomorrow at ten o'clock in the morning. Like I have to get up at like nine forty-five so that I can like throw my clothes on and leave the house. Um. But yeah. So I wanted to thank you guys for that. Back to the point. Um, there's a man named Taiao Kaneda, who is a reverend of a Sudai temple, um, the 26th generation of which, and he said it snowed on the survivors of the tsunami. So um, we is- talk about a lot of countries that have, like, different climates. Like, we haven't, like, you know, in Australia, their summer is our winter, Right. Well, in Japan, because it's in around the same place in the equator as the United States, their winters are very similar. So in March, it would have still been very, very cold. And I remember my teacher saying this when we did our, you know, class thing on it, that it was snowing on them right now. And, like, one of the big things they wanted donations for was to donate to a foundation that was buying coats for everybody, like heavy winter coats and heavy boots, because it was snowing and it was still winter there. And it was snowing and it was still winter here. Like, I remember, like, sitting in that classroom and, like, we had, like, taken all, like, I, so this was a private Catholic school. And, like, we had all come into class that morning and it was snowing and it was still dark out. 
I remember it vividly, and, like, we all took off our winter coats and put them in the mudroom and changed out of our boots and put those in the mudroom and put on our school shoes because we had to wear, like, separate school shoes. Um, so, like, obviously, if, like, that's what it was like here, I can only imagine what it was like there, especially when all of your belongings have been swept away and all you're finding your family members dead. Like, there was a man who talked um, about how he, like, he survived the tsunami and then he was, like, looking for his eldest daughter. And when he was looking for his eldest daughter, he found her dead, slumped over a bamboo shoot in a bamboo forest. Yeah, and his, his name was Kazuya Sasaki. Yes. And he, he, says, he, he says that he found his oldest daughter slumped over a bamboo shoot, which I assume means that she is probably at least ten. Um, because, you know, you have to be of a certain height to be slumped over something. He said he was, she was, like, laying over it. She looked like she was sleeping. So you, she would have had to have been a certain height because those bamboo shoots are very, very tall. Um, he then says that he found his wife about three minutes from there, a three-minute drive. Yeah, he doesn't really talk much about the wife. Uh, I imagine it's because it's just too painful. Uh, and I then just, he talks I think about what's more painful is the next part. Yeah, the, the next part is like, oh my god, like I saw him in tears and I like broke. I was like, no. And then he says that his youngest daughter was missing, and he doesn't tell us how old his youngest daughter is until he's describing that the him and some other survivors like going through de- the debris. Which, by the way, if you guys weren't aware of this, and I remember this struck me as crazy when I finally learned it. I was about fourteen when I finally learned it. The relief efforts that go over there don't do shit to help people, like, sort through debris normally. They're there to, like, hand out food and hand out water and hand out blankets and, like, house people. It's the survivors and the police and the fire department from that country and those areas that go through and sort through debris and find bodies. The relief bodies. efforts about su- helping the survivors, not the dead. Exactly. And the survivors are not going to be able to help themselves until they, especially in a place like Japan, where ancestors are so prominent and that whole concept is so... Like, it's very common over there. Like, we've all, you know, like, it, it's a very real thing over there. They believe deeply in spirits, and they believe deeply in, like, the spirits. It, like, it, it, that's one of those countries where, like, if you if, if you die in a traumatic way, your spirit will be trapped there until it comes to peace. So, it's one of those things, like, it, it's incredibly difficult to, like, hear, but these survivors who had literally just lost everything, this man finds his daughter, and then finds his wife, and then about two days after the, su- or two weeks after the tsunami, they're digging through the debris, and they're digging through the rubble in the actual city, and he finds his baby daughter dead in some debris. Somebody's like, oh, we found a baby, and he says that her face was swollen with mud on it, and um, he says that it wasn't until he wiped the mud away that he realized that it was his daughter. And that was fucking soul crushing. That's just fucked up. Um, like I said, this was a very sad and depressing episode. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, but we heard the, um, tsunami warnings. We've talked about, um, the, the temple reverend talking about how the snow fell on these survivors that were already fucking soaked. Like, we're talking with a tsunami of a maximum height of 131 feet. The confirmed dead at this time is 15,854 people. And the there are people still missing to this day. And the numbers are above 2,500. So when you're thinking about something like that and you're thinking about something that serious, like... <sighs> I that's just from the tsunami. I don't even want to think about the amount of people that died because it took days, if not weeks, to get suitable shelters set up for these people. Like, of course, some people went to shelters right after the tsunami, but there were some people that wouldn't leave the area because they felt the need to find their past loved ones. And so, like, they're sleeping. Like, I can't imagine how many people froze to death. Because they were soaking wet and couldn't get dry because it was fucking cold. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine. Like, oh, my God. It's it's upsetting. Um, 
the other, one of the other things that they mention, um, is that people couldn't have funerals. So in Japan, um, in the United States, if you live in the United States, or if you live in somewhere like Germany, burial is very, very common. It's not very common to have your, like, I, I would say, and it's probably because it costs so much money here. It's probably flip side of Japan because they have less space, but it's like two grand more to have your loved one cremated to do a funeral where your loved one is cremated at the end. It's way less money to cremate your loved one without a service, but in America, we see a funeral service as like viewing the body and like all of those things. And that um, is expensive. It's very expensive. Like, um, I, I, when I was with my ex and his dad died, like, I remember crunching the numbers and like, thank God his life insurance covered most of it. But like, that funeral, if I'm not wrong, would have been somewhere between 12 and like 20 grand without the life insurance coverage. Like, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've talked to your cousin. So I couldn't tell you specifics, but I recall that being a number because a coffin itself is seven grand. Jeez. So in America, I those just, are the funerals that are common because it's way cheaper to not have a funeral service or to um, have a funeral service and a burial as opposed to having a funeral service and a cremation. Now, if you're not going to have a funeral service, it's cheaper to go the cremation route. But in the United States, that's what's more expensive is cremation. Nine times out of ten because we want to have that funeral service attached to it. Um, I just, uh, when I die, I just want a Viking funeral. I want you to put me on a raft, throw me in the ocean... Or, you know what? A lake? Maybe a pond. I don't care. <laughs> a pond is fine. I'm not that big of a deal. Can I put you in a puddle? I, if, I, if you can fit my ass in a big <laughs> enough puddle, you can put me on a puddle, then you get someone with uh, some slight bow experience, b- put that bow on fire, and light me up. I'm going to cover you in gasoline first. Sure. Okay. I mean, if that helps. Okay. I mean, I'm going to burn regardless. What, what What does it matter whether I burn faster? Well, I mean, I can assume that I'm not going to want the cops to see what I'm doing, burning my friend in a puddle with all of his children and his I'm thinking, ex-wife I'm, standing around. I'm thinking a puddle, uh, puddle might not be in your best interest. <laughs> At least find a pond. <laughs> I'll, I'll take you to the pond in Mansfield where the old muse, amusement park would have been. Just take me to the reservoir. <laughs> That's smaller. Just no. Go, just go to the reservoir and just... I'm going to put you on a raft and I'm going to fill that raft with pure oxygen from an oxygen tank and then have somebody shoot the raft not a not you but shoot the raft with a fucking I thing I need to burn not blow and off blow you up that would be great for me it's amusing okay I'm sorry I, I'm I don't want to become fireworks I just want to burn <laughs> fireworks would be more entertaining a Viking funeral no Viking <laughs> funeral is cool enough okay um I'm disappointed with how lame you are but alright um, but okay, anyway. how do you want to go? You you don't want a Viking funeral? Um, I told I think two people this, but if anything were to ever happen to me, um, I want you guys to wait until there's absolutely no chance that they can bring me back. When they realize that there's absolutely no chance that they can bring me back, please donate my organs. I just don't want them to donate them too early. I want them to do everything that they can to save me first. I don't want it to be like, well, your organs are more right. valuable than you. Please donate my shit. I can't take it with me when I go. But let's let them try to save me first, you know? I mean, they could donate my shit, too. I just need a body to burn. Um, But donate my shit. And then, you know, I've said that if they wanted to have a service to make them feel better, they they are more than welcome to do so. Um, Do not put me in a fucking dress and don't put me in a fucking bra. I will come back and haunt every single one of you goddamn bitches. Please fuck with me. Um... (laughs) But um, they can have a service that makes them feel better, and then I want to be cremated, and I want my ashes to be, like, dispersed amongst family members. And whatever those family members, like, I like, and, or people that are close to me. Like, um, 
my best friend could have some if she wanted them. Like, and as odd as it is, like... Have you ever thought about how fucked up this is? Hey, here's some charred remains of my body. Here you go. Why don't you keep that for a Well, I mean, like, that way everybody can release my... Their, like, a, a very small, like, just a necklace portion. It wouldn't cause any pollution. But, like, a necklace portion of ashes where where they have the most memories with me. Like, uh, when I was together with your cousin, like, I, I told him this, and he was, I was like, I was like, and you could, I, I was like, you would just release my ashes where you have the most memories of me. And he was like, so you're telling me, and this is when we were in Georgia, he was like, so you're telling me I would have to drive all the way to Ohio to that godforsaken street to release your fucking ashes. And I was like, yes. Can I- we just mix the ashes into some paint and make a picture with our ashes? People do that. Um, I've thought about when That'd I was cool. when I was younger, and I'm not sure that I've I've decided this isn't going to happen. I just want to make sure that like everybody that wants some of me can have some of me, if that makes any sense. Um, but some people get compressed into records; their cremains. That's cool. We should probably uh, continue. Yeah, this is going to take forever. I'm really getting tired, and you keep going off on these tangents, and I can't fucking help you, homie. <laughs> um, but um, the reason I was off on that tangent is because. Cremation is the most common in Japan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we were talking about. Um, and they, they said 99% they, of the it's, it's people. It's more than 99% of people that die in Japan are cremated. How do you get 90, more than 99%? Like 99.9% of germs. Oh, like that kind of fuck thing. Fuck the points. <laughs> um, but like more than 90%, 99% of people that die in Japan are cremated. Um, and because of that, their funeral rites are greatly centered around that portion of the funeral, is the cremation. They could not have proper funerals. They actually had to bury people because the nuclear power plant that's in Japan that helps give them power in that city particularly was down because of the earthquake and tsunami. So the crematorium wasn't working. So they were like, and the guy talks about it. He's like, there was so much despair because they felt like they were doing their relatives wrong by burying them in the ground when you're supposed to cremate them and release their soul. And... So, like, they, like, went back later once the crematorium was working and dug up all of these people and burned them. And one, and the reverend, the same reverend that we talked about earlier, said that the first, like, it was very difficult for him because he, when they were burying the people, he had to do all of the funerals. And it was, like, one right after another, right after another, right after another, like, all in one day. They were doing these mass funerals for days because, again... These people had to grieve before they could get moving on with their lives. So they found as many people as they could that were dead in the debris, and they were just bringing them back and just funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral. And I remember, like, one of the things that stuck out to me was that he said that the first people he saw on one of the days that he was doing these funerals, their, the first set of bodies was two fifth fifth grade girls. Yeah. And he said that he was shaking so badly that he couldn't even perform the ceremony properly. He was like... Apparently he did all, all of them because he was like the only reverend that survived, I guess? No. So in temples in Japan, there typically will only be one reverend per temple because you have to train for so long so to do it. So is there no other temples? Or is Probably that- not in that area. Like each city typically has like the one temple and then you have your own like altars in your house, right? That's like how that culture goes. Um, but each area has like one communal temple where in they fairness, go to get help. I don't help. know a lot about Buddha and uh, Buddhist monks. Well, and not everywhere in Japan. And, like, they're not purely Buddhist also. Because purely Buddhism does not focus on death. And their um, culture focuses a lot on um, the similarities between life and death. So, there's that. Um... So they couldn't perform their funeral services properly, which made it, again, very difficult for um, them to grieve. There's a story of one man who, on the day of the earthquake, he he went to go find his mother, and he was, like, looking around at different shelters. And he comes to this one shelter, and he says, do you have this woman? And he tells them her name. And they're like, we'll check for you. Why don't you wait here? And he says that it's said that he saw a woman, an older woman about his mother's age, sitting, looking out a window in his mother's clothes. And he goes over to her and he says that he literally saw his mother. 
And this is where the start of, this is where the ghost story start. He said, I, it was her face, it was her clothes, they looked just like her. And, but when he took out his camera to take a picture, her face changed. And the real person sitting in that chair was somebody that he'd never seen before. And some people might say that that was just hallucination because he wanted her to be his mother so bad. But then that picture wouldn't have changed anything for him, if that makes any sense. I guess in my mind. Um, he also said that they, uh, the, a microbus washed up on shore um, where that his mother was in um, at the exact same time that he took the picture. Also, the person telling these stories is Shuji Okuno, journalist uh, and author of Stay Near Me. I don't know what that is, but it's probably a book. It's a book um, that he wrote. There was also a woman who and lost her three-year-old part. son in the tsunami, and it said that she had really bad anxiety and depression and panic attacks, and she was telling her daughter, who did survive, that um, it would be difficult for her when she died. Like, difficult for her daughter when she passed. But that she would at least be happy in heaven with her son. And they said that it wasn't meant to be a dig at her daughter, but she just could not go on while one of her children lived and the other was dead. Until one night, they're all sitting at the dining room table, and you remember how I said they really don't separate life and death in Japanese culture? And this particular woman, her way of not separating life and death was still calling her son to the dinner table every night. And so her family gets around the table, they're all sitting down, and her husband says, should we eat? And she says, hang on. And she calls her son over to the dinner table. And one of her son's toys, who had, like, a manual switch inside of an electrical switch, so it couldn't have been turned on by itself, started, like, playing and, um, like, it was turning on and shit. So that was a little spooky scary. A little, um, little spooky scary. Yes. Um, so. But apparently her anxiety... <sighs> Excuse me, and her panic attacks greatly decreased after that encounter with her son. Yeah, because now she feels like he's there with her. Mm-hmm. Um, the next we have... Uh, okay, here we go. Kiyoshi Kanabishi, PhD professor of sociology at Tohoku Gakun University, Sendai... Yes. Yes. He says he wanted to make the point that Americans grieve differently. Like, a lot of times Americans are encouraged to go to, like, um, a psychotherapist of some kind. Um, Like, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, something like that, to, like, help us get through the steps of grief. And I guess that's not common in Japanese culture because it could cause, in their minds, them to forget the deceased, which they really don't want to do. Um, But he said that he really liked... Um, hearing these stories, he said that um, there was one woman that told a story. She was in a group of people, and she said that one night, a woman, she, you know, she was at her house preparing a meal, and she answers the door when somebody knocks on it, and it's somebody standing outside in soaking wet clothes, absolutely drenched, asking for, like, clean, warm, dry clothes. And um, that then that person vanished. There was another woman, her name is Kansho, who, um, she sounds like, um, an she, empath to me, um, a different type of... She was the woman at the beginning of the show. Yes. She sounds like an empath to me, um, a very different type of empath than I am, but I, I'm an empath, I sense energies and emotions more than I sense everything, anything else, whereas it seems like she's literally able to see, um, ghosts, and she said that she felt weird as a child because she thought everybody could see them, but then she found out that they couldn't. Um, and she says that she saw three men, um, who died in the tsunami. And she said she felt sorry for them. And, um, when she stopped her car, they told her that they wanted to go home. And she had to tell them that they had actually died in a tsunami. And that they needed to carry on to the next chapter for them. Carry on my wayward son. Oh, come on, there's no p- more perfect song than that right there. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> one uh, uh, Kiyoshi also told the story of a taxi driver. Um, it was 162 days after the tsunami. Um, a 20-year-old man got into a taxi, and the driver said that he found him, like, strange. 
Um, but, like, couldn't really describe why he was strange. He said he just felt he was just odd, right? Well, he drives and drives and drives and drives a distance away. Probably at least a couple of miles. So, drives and drives and drives. And then when he reaches his destination, he turns around and he realizes that he was gone. The passenger was no longer in the back seat. And this happened on several occasions, and these are actually tracked by meters. So, and then, like, when it all came down to it, he was like, somebody had to pay for these rides. He was paying for these rides. The taxi drivers were apparently paying to take these ghost passengers to where they wanted to go to hopefully give them closure and help them realize that they had passed. Um... So the northern region has more rural areas, which is, um, and it's the region that we're talking about specifically, um, for the tsunami issue. Um, because they keep more spiritual traditions because of, like, the, uh, more rural areas. Um, and the souls of the deceased are invited by a shaman. Um, and the shaman acts as a vessel and tells their stories. Um, and this is very, very customary in this area. It's something that happens regularly. Not even just in big, huge, tragic events like this. Any time that there is a loved one that dies that is not able to say goodbye, they do this to help the spirit get peace and pass on. Um, Shao said that one night his wife brought a woman into the um the temple and that she felt sick her name was amy and he said that he had never seen someone with so much suffering um and according to this woman she had she over the course of what was like a year was possessed by several so many and she didn't really say if it stopped or not but she said she was possessed by so many of the deceased spirits um that it was overwhelming and it was painful. She said that every part of her body hurt because of how many spirits she was possessed by. And the way, there were two ways that she found to get rid of them, but she felt bad getting rid of them by one way because it was literally just to burn incense and it would, like, usher the spirits out of her. And then there were other spirits, like one of a little girl who was running away from the water like, running away from the tsunami when her brother let go of her hand and he, she was holding his hand and she felt very guilty. Yeah, and another devastatingly sad story. Literally. And I guess her brother, like, slipped in the water and she watched her brother get washed away before she herself died. Um, and the best way that they found to get this girl, this girl's spirit out of Amy's body was to just listen to her and let her tell her story. Well, she, they... The one woman pretended to be her mother. Yes, it was because Shao's she wife. just wanted to apologize for letting go of her brother. Because if 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 both of them dying to to a tsunami wasn't terrible enough, this girl this felt girl feels bad. She in felt the guilty. afterlife feels guilty that she let go of her brother when she dies just shortly afterwards. Yeah, it's it's painful, man. It's it, sad. It, it, if you can skip this episode, I recommend it. Like it is dedicated to the uh, survivors and victims of the tsunami. It's, yeah. it, it's dedicated to the victims of the tsunami and the survivors, and I I do recommend watching it. But be aware that it's going to be very emotionally exhausting. Very emotionally exhausting. It's very sad. The last time that something was this emotionally exhausting to me. I cried for over 45 minutes. And it was the first time that I watched... It's a movie. I'm sure you all have heard of it. It's called Me Before You. And in this movie... I've never uh, heard of it. Oh, my God. I'm going to make you watch it now. I don't know about this. But it is about a guy who's, like... He was, like, this really active businessman. Like, worked in the stocks. And then he, like... Um... Like, he gets paralyzed because of... Because he gets hit by a motorcycle. And he, like, tries to live his life. He tries to commit suicide once, and his parents are like, give us six months. And so she, you know, he gives them six months, and he meets this girl, and he falls in love with her because she's, like, his caretaker. Spoiler alert, this man ends his life in an assisted suicide facility 
tears, big tears, because like you don't understand. Like her plan is to like make him change his mind, and you think she's doing it. And then they take this beautiful vacation to like the Caribbean, and then like at the end of the vacation, he's like, "I want you to go with me to Dignus to end my life." And oh my god, like yeah, this oh, doesn't sound like something I want to watch. Tears, full on tears. Like no. let me tell you, when I tell you, I cried for forty five fucking minutes. I did. Over 45 minutes. My sister had to call your cousin, my ex. He was at my ex back then, too. And he literally, like, he talked me down. He was like, why are we crying? What's the problem? And I was, like, crying, explaining this whole situation. He was like, okay, I'll just stay on the phone until you stop crying. Like, it was bad. So, like, the last time that something was this emotionally draining, it was that movie. So I don't re- recommend doing it if you have, like, mental health issues of some kind or anything like that because it will be very debilitating. Um, um, let's finish this up. We'll wrap it up. Um, Amy said that she had nothing to do with the tsunami, by the way. She just became, like, a conduit for the dead so she could tell their stories and help them come to terms with everything and um, kind of help them move on. Um, he has gatherings at, um, his home, I assume, or at the temple. The, the, um, priest does. Or, he's not a priest, he's a, uh, a monk, the, uh, reverend of the temple. And he has these gatherings, and he's, he allows people to talk. Like, and I guess it helps. Which, I don't understand the difference between that and going to talk to a therapist, but okay. And they just talk to him and, like, tell their stories, and it helps them grieve. Probably because they more celebrate life instead of talk about their grief. Because they talk about earlier how um, Japanese people don't really uh, like to talk about their grief. And they don't really have grief they counselors. Compare, well, the reason that they don't have grief counselors is because they don't see life and death the same way Americans do. So, like, you and I see death as, like, the end, right? Like, that's, like, it. Like, you know, maybe you go to heaven, but it's still the end, right? They do not see that way. So they say they compared it to one of their like sheet doors. Like I'm sure you've all seen it. It's like the door made with like the thin plastic or the thin paper. And, um, yeah, they like compare it to that. And like when you die, you step through the door and then you like, but like the people that are still living can still see you. They compare it to that. Like they say that it's not like the end. And, um, so, like, you know, knowing all of that, they did this memorial service in 2019, which I'm shocked they didn't wait for the 10-year mark, but okay. And, like, and it's because they're still rebuilding. Like, they showed us pictures of things from 2019 where literally, like, you could see the, like, they showed the before and after pictures, the before, like, in, like, one month before the tsunami, and then literally, um two days or like eight years after the tsunami it was like still extremely debilitated it had not been rebuilt and so they have this memorial service and um i think that like it's the best closure that you can have to this episode i think because it shows that there's still a lot of people that care and still a lot of people that remember and want to make sure that this is talked about and that people understand and probably want to draw awareness and hopefully help to change the um, procedures that they have in place instead of evacuating two miles maybe evacuate four you know or just get as far as you can before the tsunami hits as opposed to you know just stopping it too Um, and I think that that is like the biggest thing is it's like it's difficult to like sit and think because like they definitely had like they did everything right And one of those guys, that city councilman, and, like, I know you said you didn't have an interesting story, but his story stuck with me. Like, he literally went under the water. Like, he was in the water in the tsunami. Somehow he managed to survive. And then he came back up and, like, you know, was beached or, like, put on shore at some point. And he says that he found out that 54 of his coworkers had died. And that was just in the time that he was in the water. And he said that it was, he said he felt like he was in hell. And so, like, yeah, like, it's, it's you know, everybody's story is not going to be interesting. And everybody's story is not going to be, like, what we want to hear. But, you know, it is very interesting to know that these people that clearly had a very tight-knit community have still not recovered from this. And I think that's, like, the point that they were trying to make and why they even called this an unsolved mystery. Because, like, they're still recovering. They still have not recovered completely. It takes a long time. Um... 
Other than that, do you have anything to add? <laughs> Not really. Like I said, this is a very sad, depressing episode. I, I intended on in- hijacking it because I was like, ghost. And then I was like, oh no. Super sadness. Super sadness. Not what I was expecting at all. Super sadness. It's super effective. It causes fucking depression, for sure. Um, it's not why we watch this. No, it's not. Um, it was a very good episode, in my opinion. Um, I understand that it's not like what we're used to, but I think it was very interesting. And I think it gave us a lot to think about. Which, sometimes, it's not always about the mystery. Sometimes, it's about how it makes you think. Uh, when your show is called Unsolved Mystery, oh, it's Jesus. about the mystery. <laughs> Oh, Christ. Mystery's kind of a big part of it, I'm just saying. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Um, again, thank you for whoever it was that blew up our shit on YouTube. It was incredible. Um, well, it's 1,200 people of those. Literally. So I don't know if that was you guys. If it was, thank you. If it wasn't, please, like get the word out that we're thinking because I don't know who it was like I assume that somebody like would have the only way I can think that that blew up is either the Chris Watts case is gaining something's happening with the case right now and that's causing like a big up thrust in people watching his case or somebody like it's made because it of some, suggested videos yeah. we got we got put on some other and I, I can even look them up but they, we got put on other it's the algorithms just people are clicking on it from suggested videos so, thank you to whoever is doing that. I think it's just because a lot of people hate that motherfucker. Maybe. He's a very hateable I'm dude. still thanking people because I'm very grateful. Thank you. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, go ahead and do your plug and then I think we'll sign off. plug Is that like dunk I remember those I in the 90s. I love dunk Those were like my favorite childhood candy. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, they were fucking the shit. Right. And when they took them bitches away, I was mad because they took those bitches and the like little mini cheeses. Do you know what I'm talking about? They were called like dibs or something. And they were like these little like, like that tall, and they, like that thick. And they were just full of mini cheeses. They took those and Dunkaroos away at the same time, I think. And I remember like my whole childhood was just over. Well, I have news for you. I just saw some Dunkaroos at the gas station in Cross Lane. I'm not going to the gas station cross. I fucking hate that gas station. I'm glad you, they're like making a comeback. <laughs> you can find me on Dragon Blazer Productions on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the YouTubes. That YouTube we just kind of mentioned. And then you can find me on Dragon Blazer Pro at, at Twitter. Um, we have an Unsolved Comedies. Um which is the original name of our podcast. Unsolved Comedies is the name of the Instagram that we have for the um, podcast. We also have a Facebook group called That Got Dark, a True Crime Podcast. And you guys can feel free to join that because we try to promote on there as much as we can. Um, and other than that, I think that's all I have for plug Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry that I overtook your hijacked episode, Stephen. I literally gave it to you. Yeah, I know. Um... <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for um, giving the time to the victims, even though there was no mystery. You know, I think it's important to sometimes just give time to victims of tragedy, so thank you for that. I, I think you'll appreciate the song I decided I'm going to put at the end of this. What song? Well, this is an episode about something that happened in Japan. Oh so uh, oh I was going to no. put I was going to put some baby metal on there. Okay. Okay. I approve. It's fine. I had to double check to make sure they were Japanese. Yeah, they're Japanese. Because I, di- I didn't want I could have told you that. I Japanese. didn't want to be insensitive. They're Japanese and, be and like, they're fucking gorgeous. Yeah, okay. they are. But Sorry. I didn't want to be insensitive and be like, well, I'm just going to... I didn't want to be like, oh, well, they're Asian close enough, so I'm going to put them <laughs> on there. So I wanted to make the sure prices. for sure that they were a Japanese band, and they were. So, and... uh I know this it doesn't really fit. Uh, this will be the most, probably the best part of this episode because these girls are awesome. Which one are you <laughs> playing, if I could ask, please? I'm going to probably do karate. Okay. <laughs> I think I think that that's, that's very uplifting. That's probably that the, is more, very uplifting. the most fun one. Uh, well, it's fun, but, it, but like when you actually the chocolate, look at the lyrics, it's, up, it's uplifting. Yeah, the one about yeah. chocolate's great, but this one's like uplifting. Okay. 
But, you know, so I, I was trying to think of a good song, and um, I didn't really want to bring people down with a sad, like, I considered doing something from, like, I used to own the um, soundtrack, like, directly from Japan uh, of Final Fantasy X, and it has some really cool music on there, and I debated on something from there, just because... That would have been rude. No. That would have been upsetting. Like, I would have cried more. No. Y- y- yeah. They were good songs. I've heard the Final Fantasy soundtrack, and yeah, they're great. They Very like talented individuals. Music. Yes, which is why it's sad. Well, I know. That's why I'm going with something more upbeat. Okay, then I, that's all I was saying, is that I'm glad you went with something I'm going to go with upbeat. baby metal. Well, thank you guys for listening. Please enjoy some baby, baby metal on behalf of Steven. And if you get the chance, watch it, because they're really cool to watch, too. They, their choreography on these videos are really fun. They're adorable. They, they really are adorable. Are. <laughs> All right. Well. I think we'll sign off here. Um, uh, more so than most. That got fucking dark. <laughs> and I mean, sad. It's very dark sad. Dark and sad. <laughs> I'm in this lonely, sad darkness. A very sad darkness. Hello, um, darkness, my old friend. No, we're not <laughs> doing that. I don't have the energy. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, have a great night. Night, everyone.
Hey everyone, I'm Steven from many different podcasts like Drunk Like Me, Pro Wrestling Apologist, The Rage and Blaze Show, and of course, That Got Dark. So, please like and subscribe 